Aloha. Welcome to Church of the Holy Cross, United Church of Christ in Hilo, Hawaii, for this time of contemplation, of prayer, for this time, most of all, of worship. Because this is when we open ourselves to God, when we share ourselves with God, when we declare to God just how great is our love for the one who made us, the one who redeemed us, and the one who is, also, who is always present with us. So, wherever you are, and whenever it might be on your clock, I welcome you to this time of worship, and may God's Spirit give you a lift. Our call to worship is based on the book of James, chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for others to pray for them. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. Anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, we confess our sins to one another and we pray for one another so that we might be healed. May our prayers in this time be loving, powerful, and effective, sustaining the souls of the world. The invocation is based on Psalm 124. Please join me. If you have not been with us in our desperation, O God, we do not know what, we would, have ha what would have happened. We might have been swept away in a flood of suffering, lost in raging waters of grief. You have lifted us, O God, as from a snare or a net. Blessings to you, O God, our help. Blessings to you, O God, who made heaven and earth. Amen.
You are salt for the earth, O people, salt for the reign of God. Share the flavor of life, O people, life in the city of God. Bring forth the reign of mercy, bring forth the reign of peace. Bring forth the reign of justice, bring forth the city of God. You are a light on the hill, O oh people, light for the city of God. Shine so holy and bright, O oh people, shine for the city of God. Oh, bring forth the reign of mercy, bring forth the reign of peace. Yes, bring forth the reign of justice, bring forth the city of God. You are a seed of the word, O oh people, bring forth the reign of God. Seeds of mercy and seeds of justice grow in the city of God. Bring forth the reign of mercy, bring forth the reign of peace, bring forth the reign of justice, bring forth the city of God. Oh, we are a blessed and a pilgrim people, bound for the reign of God. Love our journey and love our homeland, love is the city of God. Bring forth the reign of mercy, bring forth the reign of peace. Bring forth the reign of justice, bring forth the city of God, bring forth the city of God. This morning's scriptures come from the book of Numbers, cha um, excuse me, chapter 11, verses 4 through 6. 10 through 16, and 24 through 29. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, We are having a little technical difficulties, and we're going to try that again. The scripture today is from the book of Numbers, chapters 4 through 6, 10 through 16, and 24 through 29. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servants so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, Put me to death at once if, you have found if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and the officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. 
Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. And they were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And the young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of the chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to them, Are you jealous for my sake? Would all that the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The next reading is from the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 38 through 50. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he is not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For, I tru for truly I tell you, whoever gives a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, it would be better if you had a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better that you enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Now, usually I tell stories about the Hawaiian Islands. Indeed, most of the stories I tell are set here on the Big Island, Hawaii Island itself. But for today's story, I have to go back to the place of my own birth my childhood, and indeed <laughs> most of my adulthood, the east coast of the United States, that section we call New England. In New England, there are a lot of people who like to feed the birds. The robins, the jays, the cardinals, the starlings, the thrushes, and whoever thought that gross beak was a good name for a bird? I mean, they're not gross beaks. They're very nice beaks. They're maybe a little bigger than a robin's beak, but still, I need to remember that this story isn't about gross beaks at all. So I'm gonna leave this question right here. You see, this story is about squirrels. Now, as I said, people in New England like to feed the birds, especially in the winter. Now, a lot of those birds that I mentioned, including the gross beaks that I wasn't going to mention again, they go somewhere else during the winter. They find a spot that's warmer and where the plants are still growing things that they can eat. But there are other birds that stay there during the winter. The chickadee, which looks a lot like an elipiole with a black feather cap, or the northern cardinal, which, well, it looks a lot like the northern cardinals that live here in Hawaii, you know, the red feathers and the, uh, and the crest on the top. And it's for these birds that people put out the seed. Frequently, they've got these lovely uh, bird feeders really quite elegant constructions. And they end up in conflict with the squirrels. 
A gray squirrel looks a lot like a mongoose. Gray fur and a thin body, although a mongoose is longer than a squirrel, but a squirrel has this long and very fluffy tail. Squirrels are amazing climbers. And unlike the mongoose, they eat nuts and seeds. In fact, they eat the same nuts and seeds that a lot of those wintering birds like to eat. And so therefore, bird feeders draw a lot of squirrels, as well as birds. Not because the squirrels are going to eat the birds, but because they're going to eat the seed that people have left out for the birds. Now, there was one man who was determined to prevent squirrels from eating at his bird feeder. And he came up with all sorts of schemes. I mean, there were clever places to put the bird feeder, which the squirrels promptly found. There were barriers below to stop the squirrels from climbing, which the squirrels promptly went around by jumping from a tree. Even strategically placed nets over the top, it didn't prevent it, because the squirrels just climbed over them and jumped from there. Frankly, not a single one of his schemes worked. In fact, sometimes they worked to prevent the birds from getting there while the squirrels would climb, jump, even twist in midair to end up at the feeder safe and sound. It was a neighbor child watching one day as our bird lover was trying once more to find a way to prevent the squirrels from getting there, who asked, what is it that you're doing? And our bird lover, but not so squirrel lover, explained that he was trying to keep the squirrels away from the bird seed. Oh, said the child. And the child looked at the wintry landscape no leaves on the trees, snow on the ground, and asked, aren't the squirrels hungry too? Now, bird lovers across North America listened to the end of that story, gritted their teeth, and frankly, they are no more reconciled to feeding the squirrels than they were at the beginning of the story. That's just how things go. And I do not venture to claim that followers of Jesus are in fact obligated to feed squirrels as well as birds. Jesus did get pretty clear, however, about what was supposed to happen to obstacles obstructions, stumbling blocks, placed before the little ones. Now, who did he mean by little ones? Well, it's worth remembering last week's gospel lesson, the verses that are immediately before this one. Here's how it goes. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Who's the little one? It's still the child. With the child is still present, John broke in to ask about this rogue exorcist, this caster out of demons in Jesus' name, who, John said, wasn't one of us. 
As Debbie Thomas writes at journeywithjesus.net, never mind that the fellow is out there doing good. Never mind that he is alleviating suffering, healing brokenness, restoring people to community, and trusting in the name of Jesus to provide powerful and necessary healing. The problem remains that he's not doing any of these things in the right way. The right way. Well, what is the right way to deliver someone who has lost their freedom of action to a demon? What is the right way to relieve hardship? What is the right way to relieve pain? What is the right way to end suffering? I mean, call me naive, but isn't the right way the one that actually ends it? At least as best we can at the time? Jesus promptly reminded his disciples that at the center of the question there was still the child. The child there among them. The children of God healed by this exorcist. The children of God who might be given a cup of water. Do good things in the name of Jesus, he said, and you will think well of Jesus. More to the point, if you do good things in the name of Jesus, you will encourage those who have been blessed by that name to think well of him ever after. Now then Jesus got stern. No barriers, no fences, no stumbling blocks. Christian community is about helping one another negotiate a world that is already filled with walls and borders and things to trip over. Christian community is not about adding more of them. As Cheryl Lindsay writes at ucc.org, perhaps the most alarming part of the confession is that John doesn't seem to be making one. For him, it's more of a report. This is how I hear this conversation. Hey, Jesus, we just want to keep you in the loop. That okay, so here we are again with yet another computer dropout. Apologies for that. I'm gonna start over with uh, Debbie Thomas, uh, Cheryl Lindsay's uh, quote at ucc.org. Perhaps the most alarming part of the confession is that John doesn't seem to be making one. For him, it's more of a report. This is how I hear this conversation. Hey, Jesus. We just want to keep you in the loop. That someone was healed of their torment, but we had a problem with the source of their deliverance. So we tried to stop it. Imagine objecting to someone becoming free because their breakthrough came without your permission. Imagine deciding to put a condition of reducing childhood hunger by attaching indiscriminate requirements on parents. Imagine asking for proof of income before distributing a bag of groceries to the food insecure. Imagine limiting leadership positions in your faith community to a small group of people that you determine are acceptable. Now I know that is a challenge to our thinking. We prefer efficient ministries that distribute limited resources to those in greatest need. We prefer not to waste those resources on those who do not need them. As if we didn't allocate greater resources in our homes and in our churches to other things. We prefer leaders who are capable. I know I do. But you know, I do sometimes find myself with capable leaders and yearning for leaders with compassion. 
Leaders who are aware that there in the midst of us is still the child. Toward the end of the first century, the Bishop of Rome, Bishop Clement, lamented, why are there strifes and tumults and divisions and schisms and wars among you? Have we not all one God and one Christ? Is there not one spirit of grace poured out upon us? And have we not one calling in Christ? Why do we divide and tear to pieces the members of Christ and raise up strife against our own body? And have reached such a height of madness as to forget that we are members one of another. Now, Clement meant the church. Jesus, unconcerned about a healer who is not one of us, meant anyone. He meant still the child. Now, how serious was he about these barriers and these fences? I mean... <laughs> What's better than raising them? Drowning yourself with a millstone is better. Cutting your greedy hand off, that's better. Cutting your foot off, the one that's itching to kick somebody, that's better. Pulling out your contemptuous eye is better than raising a barrier. So yeah, pretty serious. Serious because there in the midst of them is still the child. As Caroline Lewis writes at Working Preacher, our penchant for we saw someone needs to be replaced by faith's we see Jesus. And in Jesus we see God. Our God is here. And therein lies the irony of the statement, we saw someone, because the point is, do you see God? Do you see God in the acts you saw? Do you see God in the persons who do deeds in God's name? Now that, that is a question that goes deep. So do you? Do you see God? Do you see barriers broken, walls tumbled, stumbling blocks carefully removed and carried away? Do you see there in the midst of us cared for and comforted, growing and thriving, laughing and embracing, do you see still the child? <coughs> Amen. As we enter our time of prayer, I ask for some prayers that the stream doesn't get cut off once more. But most of all, prayers for all of God's children. Let us pray. Loving God, we are your children. We are beset with our own demons, the demons of fear, of uncertainty, of limited influence, of limited means. We suffer the ills of life, disease, fatigue, ignorance, injury. We face the stumbling blocks, the obstacles, the firmly erected barriers of the world. We face the cruel ironies of the world. We and our neighbors work hard, yet others work less and receive more. 
We and our neighbors live with compassion, but those who follow their greed all too often obtain their desires. We and our neighbors strive for justice, but somehow those in power define justice in such a way that it maintains their security, their comfort, and their place. Removing those barriers of God is a difficult task. The world remains beset with this terrible pandemic still claiming lives and still eliciting both the best and the worst from your people. We ask that you would amplify the voices of wisdom and that you would soften the voices of folly. We ask that you would comfort the sick and that you would give strength to their caregivers. We ask that you would grant your healing power to struggling humanity. Hasten the day when we view COVID-19 in our past, no longer in our present. We come to World Communion Sunday next week with an acute awareness of our fractured church. Over 2,000 years of Christianity and we favor the identifying brand names of our churches over the name of Christ. As we make our slow and painful efforts to bring unity to the followers of Jesus, bless this work, O oh God, and help us take away the barriers that we ourselves erected. Make us aware when we create new ones. For you are one God, one Savior, one Holy Spirit in unity and in the mystery of Trinity. And in your goodness and grace we find our hope. Hear our prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And playing Box Invention 6 is Mace Ping. <laughs>
How can we remove the obstacles from the path of God's children? How can we ease their journey in the life of the world, of the heart, and of the spirit? We do it with gifts of love and grace, including the gifts we present to the Church of Jesus Christ. Please send your offering through the mail in an envelope to 440 West Lanikaula Street, Hilo, Hawaii, 96720, or give online at holycrosshilo.com backslash donate. Let us pray together. Your children, O God, are our neighbors, our family, ourselves. Bless your children, O God, through these gifts. May we be gathered as one ohana in your sight. Amen.
Well, friends, internet dropouts. To the contrary, we have spent this time with our spirits joined over the miles and the minutes with one another and with God. And so indeed, the poor ones have shared with the strangers and the thirsty have given water to all. Do not set obstacles before God's little ones. Instead, make a straight way through this wilderness life to the love, the grace, and the mercy of God. Well, this coming week, we have Bible study on Tuesday and the song from Church of the Holy Cross on Wednesday. Next Sunday is a special one. It is World Communion Sunday. So we will have special materials on our communion table, and I encourage you, as you prepare for communion, to think about some traditional staple food from your family that you might want to have there before you. And also, as we will have, prepare an empty bowl to remind you of those whose cupboards are empty and whose hungers are spiritual and physical. But I look forward to being with you for World Communion Sunday. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, now and always. Amen. Amen.